right, this video is about the type 1 and type 2 errors that can occur when you're testing hypotheses. So the grid here is basically giving you um, four possible outcomes that can occur. The reason why there's four possible outcomes is because there's only two things that can be true in reality. Remember, we test the null hypothesis, so either the null is true or the null is false. There is no other option. Right? Either it's true or false. Right? There's no in between. Either it's all true or it's all false. Now, our decision, because we're always testing the null hypothesis, is either that we can reject the null or we don't reject the null. So that only gives us two possible options. Putting it all together, it gives us a total of four unique options that can occur. Let's analyze these options and see which ones are the mistakes. So, starting with this one. Our decision is to reject the null, and in reality, the null is true. So, the reality is the null hypothesis is true, but we come along and we decide to reject it and say it's not true. Well, if that happens, we've committed an error, correct? Right? If it's true and we reject it, we committed an error. Let's call that the type 1 error. So, we'll say, hey, that's the type 1 case, or the type 1 error that can occur. All right, now let's look at uh, this scenario. HO is actually false, and we reject it. Well, if it's false, and we reject it, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I'd say it's a good thing, right? If it's false, it should be rejected. So I'm going to give that a check mark and say that's good work. All right, here, HO is true. It's actually true. But we do not reject it. We don't reject it. Well, I would say in that case, hey, if it's true and we don't reject it, that's a good thing, right? I mean, if it's a true statement, we should not reject it. We should not, we should not throw it out. If it's true, we should keep it. And the fact that we do that here, that's good, right? Since we do not reject it and it's true, that's a correct decision. All right, and finally, this last case scenario. Um, since I told you there's a type 1 and type 2 error, you can probably guess that this must be the other error, the type 2 error. So I'll go ahead and type that in here, write that in, and then you can um, listen to me explain why that's in fact an error. Okay, well, if the HO is false, right, and we do not reject it, we're essentially letting a falsehood stand out there as being true, right? We had this opportunity to reject a false statement, and we didn't take it. We didn't reject the false statement. So it's a mistake, it's a type 2 error. And so we're going to talk about two, two more things related to this concept. These are only four outcomes. I don't want you to think they're equally probable. They're not equally probable. Um, the correct decisions happen way more often than the incorrect decisions, typically. And uh, for this guy, the type 1 error, we're going to deem it to be the worst error, the error we're most concerned with. So we're going to actually put a limit on there. We're going to put the limit. We're going to set it at a certain level called a significance level, and we'll decide to make it, you know, for example, no more than 1%, or no more than 2%, or no more than 5%, or exactly 3%. You know, we'll be able to set that error in place depending on some other conditions in the problem. The type 2 error we generally let fluctuate because um, we're really going to try to pin down this one. This one kind of goes freely on its own there because we're most concerned with this error. But again, in general, um, there's much more likelihood that we make the right decision than the wrong decision. Okay, so now from here, what I want to do, the last thing I want to do in this video is to really give you um, something you hear a lot of times in American classrooms when they teach this concept. I want to make a comparison um, of this set of possible decisions and outcomes to our criminal system here in the United States. In our criminal system, the null hypothesis, the status quo hypothesis, remember that's the null hypothesis, what we deem to be true typically um, from a historic uh, sense. So in other words, it's the status quo typically. Well, what's our status quo hypothesis in a criminal trial about a person's innocence? Well, we would generally say that um, the status quo hypothesis is that a person is innocent until proven guilty, right? That's the general idea in America, right? That the innocence of a person is assumed to be true until we can convict them and show that it's no longer true in a court of law, right? But we know that those court of laws um, are not perfect. They make mistakes. In fact, they'll make two kinds of mistakes as well. And they can also get it right in two different ways. So let's talk about um, this in terms of that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change these so we can see exactly how they would be under this um, idea of a criminal trial. So if HO is true, well, if HO is the idea of innocence, and that's true, then we're basically saying the person is innocent, right? Let's put in here innocence or innocent. OK, so the person is innocent there. In the other scenario, if HO is false, their innocence is false, it means the person is guilty, right? That would mean the person is actually guilty. Okay, now from there, if you reject HO, it means you reject their innocence. That would be the same as saying as you convict them, right? So you get a conviction there. Now 
would be the jury's decision, right, to convict. And then we finally have do not reject HO. This means you do not reject their innocence. This would mean you basically acquit them of the crime, right? So you have an acquittal. So you would assume there that you acquit, right? All right, so let's see if this works out. It'll be the same thing, right? Two mistakes, two correct decisions. Let's see if it's correct. All right, in reality, the person's innocent. You convict them. That's a type one error, right? Okay. It's an error, right? It's a mistake. If the person's innocent, you shouldn't convict them. That's an error, and a major error at that. Then, the person is guilty, right? You convict them. Well, that's a good decision, right? If they're guilty, they deserve to be convicted. So that's correct. Innocent person, right? On trial, you acquit them. That's a good decision. Lastly, a guilty person is on trial. You acquit them of the crime. You let them go. You've committed another error. It's a type 2 error. Now let's think about it. We said that we're going to assume that our type 1 error is the worst case scenario. Does that fit this model? I think it does, right? Because in the United States, in our criminal system, um, we've tried to prevent this from happening the most. That's why we have things like the Bill of Rights in place, right? To so protect people's rights. And why? Because we want to avoid this scenario where an innocent person is convicted. We don't want to put an innocent person in jail. All right, so that's basically the concept of type 1 and type 2 error. We're going to talk about how to control the probability of this type 1 error and how that relates to something later called the critical value, and we'll do that in the next couple of videos.